two fuel injectors. Why would you run dual injection on a dirt bike or any engine for that matter? Well, in cars, there's all sorts of reasons, right? Some of these drag and drive cars have methanol, gasoline, blah, 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 blah. But why would a one cylinder engine need two fuel injectors? Well, we're gonna answer a little bit of that question in today's video, because that happens to be a new generation Honda 250F, and we happen to have a two injector setup on the bike, but we can switch between single injection and dual injection right there up on the map switch. We've got a get ECU in the bike, really cool setup for us. We can control both injectors independently. That means we can control the fuel coming out of one or the other or both. We can change when it fires the fuel. We can change which one fires how much fuel. And so of course, those are all things you have to do when you optimize your maps for dual fuel injection. The cool thing is we can go optimize them both and then directly by switching the map switch, go between both maps and get a direct comparison back to back. You can't do any better than that. Now, there's a lot of complication on this subject and we're gonna shoot a bigger video on it because we're gonna show you multiple scenarios where it really makes a difference, like on this bike today, and where it really doesn't make a difference. And that comes down to the fuel you run, the types of injectors that you choose, the sizes of those injectors, the angling of your injector, and a host of other factors. This subject is really complicated, but if implemented correctly, like it is on this bike, I think you guys are gonna be pretty wowed by the result that you can get just from adding a second injector. Now, we're gonna show you that, we're gonna get it going, but don't think for one second that it has to do with really supplying more fuel. That's not why we do it. We are doing it to move the injector, and we'll touch on that after I show you this run. So, let's make some noise and get this thing fired up on the dyno. First up, dual injection. You're not gonna be able to hear a difference, but that's with the map switch in the down position. Click it to the up, that's map one on this setup, and that's single injection. So we're gonna start off with dual injection, and then right away we're gonna to switch to single injection and go back and forth and show you guys how it runs on the dime. So we have corrected horsepower for both runs. The corrected horsepower in this upper line or the light blue is dual injection and the corrected horsepower in single injection is here in yellow. Torque is these two charts, doesn't really matter and people don't seem to grasp this these days, which they, I guess they don't think about it, but torque and horsepower can be calculated if you know RPM. So it doesn't matter which one we're showing to you. People say, show me the torque, Derek, show me the torque, but what torque does it make? If you make more power everywhere in the curve than another power curve, you made more torque. Period, that's how the math of it works out. Now, as you can see, we are significantly up on the horsepower. 44 versus 41, right here at 12.7. And the power really starts to diverge right here at about 10,000. So if we go all the way down to 10,000, you can see it's at 41.4 versus 39.6. So that's two horsepower, and it kind of carries that all the way through. I could sit here and tune this single injection and improve this result today a little bit, but it's not an air fuel thing. And that's what people need to understand about tuning. There's so much more to ECU tuning than just air and fuel. And that's what this lower chart is right here. This is air fuel ratio. What do you notice? Look how identical they are. They're the exact same. And yet the power difference can be upwards of two horsepower. Dual injection works. Now, why does it work? That is the fundamental question that you gotta ask yourself. So let's talk about that. So. All right. So we just showed you that you can make huge power gains. And I say huge, two horsepower in our industry, guys, is massive. 
I've tested every pipe on this bike. I've tested every piston you can think of. I've tested all sorts of ports and cams and valve springs and little goodies I can't share. Not a single one of those items will do a two horsepower difference. Not one of them. That said, not always is dual injection worth that kind of power. And we're going to have future videos on that. So typically I tell my people who call me, it's worth about one horsepower. And I can pretty much say that universally on any bike pretty accurately. We think that that's about accurate. But on this bike, we saw about two horsepower. Why do we even run dual injectors? And that's, that's really what I want to talk to you guys about in this video. We'll get more into depth in it well, in a future video. But the reality is, is that we don't want to run two injectors. It sucks. Think about it. You got to add two fuel injectors. You got to have an extra fuel injection supply line for the power aspect of it for turning it on and off. You have to have another fuel line that adds weight, that adds complexity. And then more importantly, we have the ECU side of things. We have got to program and come up with strategies to make the two injectors work. And that's really complicated. And so it adds a failure point. If anybody remembers what happened to Club MX on the starting line at Anaheim 1 with, I believe, Phil Nicoletti, and I believe it was last year. Second injector stopped working, wasn't able to race his main event, cost him a main. And that, that could have been as simple as a little tiny terminal connector inside the wiring harness, which of course these teams are making. And so, hey, humans make mistakes and so do the production bikes, right? So it's not something that was wrong with the engine builder. It's not something that wrong with the ECU. It wasn't something that I don't know, but probably not wrong with the injector. Nothing wrong with the fuel system. It just had a little error probably in the connection or whatever, and it didn't run. So you add, you know, properly. So you add complexity. But why run two injectors? Why not just move the injector? And what are we really doing with both injectors? Well, let me share that with you. So behind me here is this Honda. Right there is the intake valve approximately. Right there is the throttle body with a stock fuel injector. And then right here is where our second injector is located. It's actually right about there. It's about 12 inches away, maybe a little bit more from the valve. So what we do is, what is dual injection doing? Why does it even make power? Are we supplying twice as much fuel? No, of course we're not. What we're really doing is just moving the injector. By moving the injector back there, we get much better mixing of the fuel and turning it into what we call a vapor or a gaseous state. So it has to go from a liquid state to a gaseous state in order to burn. And by giving it more time to do so, so from going back there all the way through the you know intake tract, it gets more time to convert into a gaseous state. Number two, it increases the density of the air because when we so put fuel into air and it turns into a gaseous state, it pulls heat away. So we increase the charge density of that air. And by doing so, we make more horsepower, plain and simple. You saw it on the dyno today. The problem arises is that if all we did was just take your stock injector and move it back there, which we certainly could do, and I promise you, we would make those power gains. Um, that'd be a great video for us to show you one day. But I'll, I'll explain how this works so that it should make sense to you. Is we would make the power, but then we run into a host of other problems. And those problems are really important problems and why your bike doesn't come with the injector located back there. You see, what happens is we lose throttle response. We lose the transition ability of the bike to go from low to high RPM. What happens when the bike lands at high RPM and drops down or hits a, hits a whoop or things like that, we really, really start to lose some of the good qualities we have of a close injector. You see, that close injector is close enough that almost every single time it sprays fuel, it goes into the cylinder. This far injector is so far away and there's so much volume of air between it and the engine that not all the fuel you spray out of it goes into the engine every single cycle. It's actually a couple cycles delayed usually. It's usually three cylinder fillings of volume that it has to overcome. So that means that it takes almost three openings of that intake valve before the fuel that you sprayed fully found its way into the cylinder and that's delayed. And so that's not great for throttle response or transients. And then there's a lot more complexity in transients that we're not touching on that make it really hard to get throttle response if we only had that injector. Part of that is you have to wet all the surfaces between the two areas, and that's a really complicated subject. So the solution is to run two injectors. And it's kind of like having a robot arm in there that says, okay, at low RPMs and at lower throttle positions, we got the injector right here. And then you get to high RPM and high throttle positions and wham, it moves the injector back there. And then boom, it moves it back. Anytime you change throttle position or RPM, 
That's kind of sort of how you can view a dual injection system. It's not about getting twice as much fuel. It's about getting fuel from a different location at the right times. So that's kind of the ifs, the whys, what we're doing here. Does it work? Heck yes, it can work. Typically, that a horsepower. No, not always too. This particular bike loved it. It really woke up. And some things to think about, since we're not using that injector all the time, and because we're changing the function of the bike around, do both injectors need to be the same size? Should they be the same size? Could we do some things there? Do we do some things there? What do you guys think? What do you think would be the optimal arrangement by using the tool injector setup when it comes to injector sizing? What about injector angles? So for example, on that Ford injector, KTMs on the 250s and 450s, they run their injector vertical. It shoots into the throttle plate. It doesn't angle towards the cylinder at all. Hondas, Kawasaki's, Yamaha's, they angle their forward injector, their close injector, the one that comes stock, right towards the intake valve generally. Does that make a difference? So if you go from a single injected bike to a dual injected bike, let's say we did it on a KTM, should we change the injector angle on the KTM? And if so, why should we do that? Those are some things you should think about. And of course, where is the injector placed and how big it's sized and all of these things are really important when it comes to the design of the bike. So anyways, my name is Derek Harris. Thank you guys for watching. Leave a comment, like, subscribe. Really appreciate it. And uh, check back for future videos. I'll see you guys next time.